first of all, this is a great list because everybody needs a big guy in their life. If they're gigantic and they got a huge girth and belly, uh, I'm a fan of theirs. Fat guys are my people, man. Oh. This is my favorite topic. Come on, let's all be honest. One of them picks up a fumble. We all say, fat guy touchdown. We may not be the cutest guys in the world, but we're the biggest guys in the world. It's not sexy. It's beefy, but it's big. And you look at him and you're like, whoa. Imagine sleeping with him. What? <laughs> yes, we finally getting some love. Big guys, in a sport full of them, how do you exactly rank the top ten? They're fat guys. They're not big guys. They're all big in the NFL. These guys are fat. Maybe instead of fat guys, you go with husky fellas or guys who don't go on hikes on dates. It's something to shoot for. Like, if I really went out there, got my pizzas in every day, and, and got my ice cream in every day, yeah, maybe I could box somebody. After thorough research of the poundage, the plumpness, and the portly, we went with the 10 guys who were defined by their size, not necessarily their ability. Or in other words, he came, he saw, he ate, he left. The number 10 big guy of all time, Nate Newton. Hi, I'm Nate Newton, offensive guard for the Dallas Cowboys. My claim to fame, <laughs> that's a lot of damn jelly. Kicking off our countdown is one of the biggest players on the list. At his heaviest, Nate Newton weighed more than 400 pounds. If there's a Mount Rushmore of NFL fat guys, Nate Newton is number one. I thought he glamorized fat for a while. He was fat and he was kind of proud of it. <laughs> he loved being fat. It was his big shtick. Do you consider yourself fat or just big? No, I'm, I'm big, man. I'm one of your more sexier offensive linemen in the league. I'm looking sexy, as you can see. Notice I use no makeup. I'm fat enough to sweat without it. He had a famous quote. Every night, I'm going to try to dream about my girl, but I end up dreaming about ham hocks. A lot of people identify with me more than they do a Michael Irvin or a Troy or a Steve Young because there's a lot of fat people in the world. Nate weighed 355 pounds when he reported to Cowboys camp. Teammates looked at him and said, forget the fridge, this guy's the kitchen. You're talking about a guy who has a sandwich named after him in Dallas, the Nate Newton sandwich, and it was humongous. I once saw him go back for fourth. The man could just put it away. You know, him may be a Russian leader, but I'm the eating leader. Uh... <laughs> Nate moved well for a big guy. He was an athlete who happened to be massive. As large as he was, he could move. And when he was a moving force, you did not want to get in his way. Emmett Smith would disappear behind him. Just get behind Nate. I mean, he just blocks out half the field. Yeah. Once he gets his hands on you, he might as well just go back into the huddle and get the next play, because your play is over with. Boy, Nate just took his guy and just boom. Newton won three Super Bowls with the Cowboys, but life off the field brought trouble. Newton was busted twice within five weeks for carrying around hundreds of pounds of marijuana in his car. He served 30 months in jail. The first time that you get caught with that much weed in your trunk, you probably like maybe put something else in your trunk like groceries, but not Nate. Was it like around April 20th? Was it around the 4th of July? Was there just a good new movie coming out? If that's the case, then perhaps this was just for personal use and clearly he had the munchies quite a bit. The munchies stopped after weight loss surgery. Newton lost 200 pounds and his appetite. Man, what? I remember this used to be a place I can come high and eat a whole lot of food. I just think it's unfair you have Nate Newton on the fat guy list because he's not a fat guy anymore. He's a reformed fat guy. But I see y'all still got my sandwich on here, man, a new ultimate, huh? I don't think I can put that away now, man. When a big guy loses weight, too, it's kind of like throwing deck chairs off the Titanic. He should still be on the list because it's kind of like once you're a fat guy, you're, you're in the club for life. 
He's the biggest human being I've ever seen in my life. The whitest human being I've ever seen. Coming up, find out who the biggest running back is on our countdown. Trim the fat. Trim the fat. Not everyone could squeeze onto our list of big dudes. In 1948, when defensive lineman Les Bingaman entered the league, he was one of the portliest players in the NFL. You're looking at Les Bingham, 320 pounds of diamond. He was the perfect size for the Motor City's defense and for Ford's steering wheels. What a wallop! But he wasn't injured. Steering wheels could hold back Bingaman. But defenders struggled to stop running back Craig Ironhead Hayward. Yeah! Yeah, baby! Come, baby, come, you Ironhead! Woo! Come on, Iron, you gotta come better than that, baby! <laughs> you gotta come better than that! Boy, you better get some Jenny Craig! Yeah, knock somebody you better get some Jenny Craig, baby! Ironhead never joined Jenny Craig, but he did become a Pro Bowl running back and spent 11 years in the NFL. Breaking a tackle! He's at midfield 50. He's at the 40. Nobody's going to catch Ironhead Hayward. That's his first touchdown in the NFL. Hayward got his nickname for lowering his iron-like head into the stomachs of defenders. He was good, but not as good as our number nine big man, who got his nickname from a transportation service. The number nine big guy of all time, Jerome Bettis. Fat, or is he just thick? Oh, I'd say thick. I don't want to insult Jerome Bettis. I'll call him thick. Actually, call him the bus. Here come the bus! Go for a ride! Jerome Bettis may have only ranked ninth on our list, but as far as nicknames go, his is one of the best. The give us to the bus. I always liked it because he did have the black and, and the gold, and, you know, the school buses are yellow. Yeah, but buses are sleek and lean, you know? You don't think of a bus being round and roly. You're gonna be a vehicle and be a tough dude. You wanna be a tank. You wanna be a bulldozer. You don't wanna be a bus. Like the bus is where your mom drops you off so that you can go play soccer. And then like Jerome Bettis is driving it. And you're like, hi Jerome, good to see you today. And he's like, oh good to see you too, children. That's not threatening. Okay, so his nickname didn't scare everyone, but his size did. 260 pounds on a five foot 10 inch frame will do that. I don't care what his listed weight was. At times, he was 20 pounds over that listed weight. Bettis was just impossible to tackle. The bus shakes him off like flies! Obviously, he's a huge guy, but just how thick he was through the midsection, through his legs, it's like, you know, he used himself like a battering ram, and no one could get their arms around him. When they get a load of me. He's the type of guy that will run you over and say, good hit. <laughs> so, as a 195-pound free safety, you just kind of didn't want to see that guy get past the linebackers. <laughs> you saw Jerome Bettis running at you with a full head of steam. Would you want to tackle him? And a bus stays clean. No, who would want to tackle him? You don't get paid enough for that. Let's go to work, baby. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's the greatest big back of this era. Like a scat back <laughs> in an offensive lineman's body, okay? And there's a, an avenue for the bus, and the bus says, I'll take that avenue, it's easy street. That's when you want every pound that you can muster up when you're going in the hole and Brian Erlacher is standing there. If you don't hit those guys, those low, square, round, chubby, fat, whatever you want to call them the right way, they're going to run you over. That's what the bus is all about. He just refused to be tackled. You know, one of the best linebackers of his era was no match for Jerome Bettis. But in that situation, I don't know if Mean Joe Green would have been a match for, for Jerome Bettis. Who said they was all tough? They ain't so tough. Over his 14-year career, Bettis was a Rookie of the Year, Comeback Player of the Year, and a Super Bowl champion. To the great Jim Brown. Here I come, baby. Fat guy. Nobody thought he had 10,000 in here. 
Oh, yeah. And his 13,662 rushing yards ranks sixth all time. Most of Jerome Bettis' yards are obviously between the tackles. But the other thing that he did was his ability to juke a little bit. I ain't fast. I'm kind of quick. <laughs> I had a weeper wobble, but I, but I don't fall down. Bettis weighed well north of 250, but he had the light feet of someone who was just south of 220. I'm ready to shake right and roll, baby. He would just make enough of a cut to make a difference to accelerate through a hall. Jerome breaks the tackle. Talk to like a cousin or a wife or a girlfriend. Show them a picture of Jerome Bettis and ask them to guess what position he plays. And then you get to see the look on their face when you say, no, he's actually a running back. The number eight big guy of all time, Sebastian Janikowski. Janikowski is bigger than me. Gives me hope that I can still kick one day. Sebastian Janikowski, a.k.a. Seabass, needs to be higher on the list. When a kicker takes his game up to the level that Sebastian Janikowski has to become fat enough for us to notice, you have to properly honor that in the top ten list. But obviously he's very gifted and tough as nails because I've seen him tackle people on the kickoffs. Maybe he's not the greatest tackler of all time. But he does have one of the strongest legs in NFL history. He has the loudest noise that I have ever heard from a kicker. Yet, he strolls out there and you're thinking, wait a minute, this guy not only looks like an offensive lineman, his nickname's the Seabass. He's one of the great kickers of his generation, and he looks like he just came from a frat party. I mean, he kind of shook loose of the prototypical, this is what a kicker is going to look like, and came into the NFL and just hammered the ball. With Sebastian Janikowski, once you cross the 50-yard line, you say, look, you may need five or six more yards, and we're in field goal range. I've never seen a more fearless field goal kicker, period. That's a hell of a kick, partner. Speaking from a guy who played on the kickoff team, you love Sebastian because you knew all those kickoffs were going either out of the back of the end zone or it was going to be a touchback. This fat kicker keep kicking the ball out the end zone, man. There have been plenty of big coaches throughout NFL history, but none had the personality of Chicago Bears coach Abe Gibran. Jeremiah was a bullfrog, huh? Abe Gibran. You don't have him on the list. Central casting. Hello? Need a football coach. Abe Gibran. Joy to the world. Joy. He got the big thing going. Got the nose, got the hair, got the hat. Gibran's voice was bad, but his teams were worse. In his three seasons as head coach, the Bears finished 11-30-1. Even the pigskin Picasso that I used to call Steve Sable, even he had the genius to say, Abe Gibran, boom, guy, football coach. Hey, you don't even have him in the top ten. That's crazy. Watch the three! Watch the reverse! Pass! Watch everything! To me, he's the founding father of fat in the NFL, and you don't even have him on your top 10 list. It's ludicrous. One of the most boisterous coaches of the 1970s, Gibbert has nothing on our next big guy. The number seven big guy of all time, Rex Ryan. Rex Ryan is great because he used to be really fat, and now he's just fat. I'm in a different weight class. <laughs> well, I mean, can we call him a fat guy anymore? He's lost a lot of weight. He doesn't look like the same guy anymore. His brother's still a big fat guy. Rex Ryan, he's a twin. I mean, the together, they have a lot of poundage. They have so. a lot of girth. Rob and Rex Ryan. It's not fair to Rob Ryan to put Rex Ryan on this list. They have to be on the list together. I just said, hit the guy that looks like Barney. Wow. No, oh, coming wow. after Oh, wow. Oh, oh. Hey, hey, I'm slimming up. Sorry. Hey. There was a time when Rex Ryan, like his brother Rob, looked like he was about to give birth to twins. But that's no longer the question. Did Rex Ryan become less effective when he was losing weight as a head coach? No way! No way! I have made the contention that Rex Ryan became a less good coach, if that makes sense, when he lost weight. Oh. 
It's almost like uh, Samson when he gets his hair cut off. It sure looks like once Rex lost the pounds, he lost his personality. Damn, that's bull. I mean, I thought he was a better coach when he was fat. When he was fat, Rex's record was 28 and 20. Skinny Rex's Jets have gone 14 and 18. Uh, to me, it seemed like he was more fun loving as a big guy. Let's go get some snacks. That's what I want to see tomorrow. Do we understand what the f I want to see tomorrow? I have a hundred percent respect for a guy who can just say, let's go eat a damn snack. Let's go to eat a damn snack. I think if he says, let's go eat a damn snack now, it's like, ah, uh, some nuts and berries. You're like, Meh. It wasn't always body beautiful and fruits and vegetables for sexy Rexy, so things had to change. There's uh, 14 crackers in there. 14 crackers. <laughs> Rex is the kind of guy we get heavy during the season and then knock a ton of weight off during the spring. He's still doing the same thing. You look good, man. You've been lost weight and everything? I don't know. Season. Yeah, see, I do just the opposite. I blow up, you slim down. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Is Rex on a diet or something? Rex Ryan looks like he's wearing a baggy Rex Ryan costume. Like he got it last Halloween, then lost a bunch of weight. Damn, I'm losing so much weight, I gotta pick my drawers up. I want the old Rex back. I want the big Rex. I want the guy with the big stomach and the big jowls. Heavy, heavy, heavy! Stay fat, Rex. Come on. I mean, the players are always going to run through the wall for you. He's a great defensive coach. He had Mark Sanchez in two AFC Championship games. You know, Mr. Butt Fumble himself. I would have to say his most impressive coaching job, though, was in 2013. Going 8-8 eight and eight with a roster that should have gone 3-13. and 13. Getting 8-8 eight and eight out of a team that pretty much all the experts said was no better at best a four-win team. He did a pretty damn good job last year, I thought. I think Sexy Rexy is still a great head coach. The spirit of Big Rex Ryan will forever live on. He absolutely deserves to be on this list. Number six big guy of all time, Albert Hainsworth. Hainsworth to me is one of the old time, took the money, got the big money, and turned out to be an absolute bust. Albert was just a big athletic dude that was not into doing anything once he got the contract he was looking for. He got a hundred million reasons why to just become a flopper. Pound for pound, he might be the most embarrassing guy on this list because he got paid and it's like he ate all the money they gave him. He was big, but I don't know if he was fat until he got lazy. You know how big Hainsworth is? I don't, I don't look at Albert Hainsworth as being fat. Just because you're lazy doesn't necessarily mean that you're fat. You know what? I take that back. After he got the contract, then he was fat and lazy. Before that, he was a monster. Big Hainsworth. Wow. That had to hurt. Drafted 15th overall in 2002, Hainsworth was a two-time All-Pro with the Titans. We're going to hard count this, alert him now, even with the motion, because Hainsworth is just teeing off right now. There was about a three-year stretch where he was a dominant player. I mean, when you watched him play some games, you wondered, could anyone, anyone block him? And the answer was no. Albert was so talented until he met Shanahan. This is another reason why the Redskins are so amazing. So they throw a bunch of money at Albert Hainsworth, and then he couldn't even pass the conditioning test. Everybody you know can pass the conditioning test. It's like, eh, run across that field there and come back. And like somewhere between the across and the come back part, Albert was like, I'm done. But it's not a conditioning test or a contract that Albert Hainsworth is remembered for. Albert Hainsworth, the only thing I remember about him is him stepping on the guy. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 92 for stopping a player's hell there. Oh, that's a call for him. When he was with Tennessee, there was that moment where he, he stomped the guy. I was jealous of that as a Redskin because he couldn't re raise his leg up enough to stomp anybody. So let me get this straight. You've got the guy that stomps people's faces ahead of the three-time Super Bowl champion. It's not good. He had the ability to be one of the all-time greats. And when you look back on it, he's one of the all-time teases. Up next, he's the only quarterback who had noticeable dimples in his butt. He was so fat. Will a signal caller actually make our countdown of the top 10 big guys?
boundary, Fatso, boundary, Fatso, boundary, Fatso. Turn the fat. Before we pile on any more pounds, let's take a look back at our countdown so far. Number 10, the Cowboys' cholesterol catastrophe. My claim to fame. Number 9, the bus carries a heavy load. That guy, nobody thought he had 10,000 in him. Number 8, a fresh plate of sea bass. Janet is bigger than me. Number 7, Sexy Rexy. I'm in a different weight class. <laughs> Number 6, the NFL's Fat Elmer. Pound for pound, he might be the most embarrassing guy on this list. The number five big guy of all time, Jamarcus Russell. Jamarcus Russell. Jawalrus Russell. Jamarcus Russell's the one that gets me. Is this show the top ten fat guys who can't play? Sitting right in the middle of our top ten is the only quarterback on the list. It's a ranking that didn't meet with rave reviews. Jamarcus Russell is five on the fat guy list, but ah! above Jerome Bettis, who won a Super Bowl, and Rex Ryan, the great defensive mind of our generation. Jamarcus Russell, there aren't many fat quarterbacks, so maybe he deserves to be on this list as truly the fattest of the fat quarterbacks. What other top ten list could Jamarcus Russell possibly be on? Yeah. Top ten draft day busts, top ten quarterback busts, top ten I, I once ate a bust. Early on, Russell didn't so much bust, but thrust himself onto the national scene. His size and athleticism were unprecedented. Jamarcus was probably 6'4", maybe 185 when I first laid eyes on him. But he could throw a football like none other. The big physical marvel was that he could throw a football something like 70 yards from his knees. As it turned out, an appropriate drill for him, because given how big he got, he couldn't move anywhere anyway. Okay, Raider fans, Jamarcus Russell. The number one overall pick in 2007, Russell came into the NFL with a lot of hype. Three years later, he was out of football. Listen, it's the old thing, kick, be careful who you make a millionaire. When he got to pro ball, where you're seen as a grown man, you're seen as a professional football player, I think he ended up on his own, and that's when his weight really ballooned and got out of control. He got up to the line of scrimmage. You can tell he didn't work hard. He's the only quarterback who had noticeable dimples in his butt. He was so fat. He had an affinity for takeout food and purple drink. We know about that, too. You drink too much of that purple drink, it's like all water weight. It stays in your body. It's Gatorade, it's vodka. What else is in there? Rum, something. Kahlua. I, whatever it is. It gives you cankles. Every Friday in the NFL is weigh-in day. I remember one time Jamarcus Russell came in. I just, I just wanted to peek and see what he weighed. And I looked and I said, whoa. He was bigger than some of our defensive ends. No one was going to employ a 300-pound quarterback. If he could have stayed in the 260s, uh, I think he still would have gotten another chance. What a ball that was by Jamarcus Russell. Jamarcus Russell proves there are certain things you can't measure. He just couldn't play the quarterback position at the NFL level, despite all the great measurable athletic virtues that he had. Quarterbacks get all the love, all the time. You know, the big guys don't. So, Jamarcus, welcome to our world. The number four big guy of all time, Vince Wilfork. I think Vince is probably one of the fattest guys in the NFL right now, but I wouldn't say that to his face. But he gets the job done, and it's rare to see a guy that big be so quick. Vince Wilfork is an athlete who just happens to have a few extra pounds on him. I don't think of Vince Wilfork as a fat guy. He moves way too well to be called a fat guy. Most would agree the number four big man on our list is large and in charge. But what does Vince think? I argue with guys, my teammates, every year about who's the best athlete on the team. I would say me. Plain and simple. The hit he had against, I think it was Stevie Johnson when they played the Bills. That's just like a hit that you dream about. His wife was up in the stand, like, oh! It's certain guys you let in the car, and it's certain guys you ain't letting in the car. If me in the fridge and a couple other big guys was in the car, we gonna let Vince in the car, because he's just like us. 
He ain't sugarcoat nothing. His stomach hang over his, his pants, but he plays football with passion and intensity. Hey, we put the children to bed. We're going to do grown folks stuff. You feel me? The Super Bowl champ and five-time All-Pro has a chance to go down with the all-time greats. I think he's the best defender that the Patriots have ever had. You hear a lot of people talk about the Patriots Super Bowl champions, that there were no Hall of Famers on those teams except for Tom Brady, and that is not true. Vince Wilfork is a Hall of Famer. Vince Wilfork has been the mainstay of that defense. He was the Tom Brady of the Patriots defense. Can I describe Vince Wilfork's appearance? It's like three very strong, big people pressed into one. He takes the work of three guys into one person. He, like, saves the company money. He's a game changer. You have to plan for him. You are not running off tackle against the Patriots with that guy on the football field. He may be a big man, but he's got the stamina. He plays over 80% of their plays. I always thought he had, like, a third lung. Big guys like that shouldn't have that much endurance. I could play anywhere on the front line. No matter what this defense goes to, if it's a 4 3 3 4 5 2 goal line, I don't have to come off the field. When he does come off the field, you know where to find him. We gonna eat, baby! And the proof was in the pudding at the Will Fork home this past Memorial Day. At hey, baby. Day, baby. I'm always hungry, you know I me. Know, I already. As a defensive player, you sack, interception. What do you want? Give me a pick. I like a pick. Sack, uh, whatever. Sack. But picking ball off, running with it. Passes away, tip, blue fork intercepted. That's a thrill. Every big man's dream is to run with the ball. Trust me on that one. Vince Wilfork gets the ball, you're like, oh my God, we're about to watch magic. And the big guy's rumbling down. 120 odd pounds. I hate him because I'm a Jet fan. How could I like Vince Wilfork? How could I like Vince Wilfork? Tell me. I, I got to watch him twice a year, sometimes three. Who needs to see that? I have seen Vince Wilfork do some things that impress me from a strength standpoint, but that one just jumped to the top five. It's really nothing much I can't do, to be honest with you. Only thing I can't do that I'm going to learn is ice skating. Coming up, which offensive line was so big, they all had to be included. Finally, the grunts were being recognized. They're every man, that guy. You got something you want to tell them, right? You got to get paid to wear those things? What's that? New well, Balance? New Balance is comfortable, huh? Now listen, when you when I'm you get to three bills, <laughs> when, you're, when you're three bills <laughs> no, and 52 no. years old, you get to wear these right here. Hey, hey. These are made for fat guys. One of the biggest coaches in the NFL, Andy Reid not only has a large number on the bathroom scale, but also in the win column. No idea how you do it, but I know this, your heart's as big as my waist. Reid took the Chiefs to the playoffs in his first season. He's got a touchdown! Chiefs, baby. A feat he accomplished multiple times while in Philadelphia. To the winningest coach in the history of the Philadelphia Eagles. However, Andy Reid has yet to be fitted for a Super Bowl ring, unlike the big guys in our number three spot on the countdown. Number three big guy of all time, the Hawks. First of all, they weren't fat. They were studly. You think the hogs are the big giant guys, huge guys? Go back and look now. Little guys. I have the actual playing weights of the original 1982 hogs right here for you. Joe Jacoby, 305 pounds. Mark May, 295 pounds. Jeff Bostic, 268 pounds. Russ Grimm, 273 pounds. And George Stark, 260 pounds. Average weight, 280.2 pounds. None of them would be able to play offensive line in the NFL anymore. We'd be calling them the piglets. Five offensive linemen plus tight ends Donnie Warren and Rick Doc Walker. Together they sit at number three on our list. The key was that they were athletic as well as being big. I mean the reason Joe Gibbs' team were successful is largely that offensive line made that offense go. 
And you know you win three Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks? It's because you have the best offensive line by far in the NFL. Yeah, those offensive linemen that we had were super smart. Come here, boss. Take your, take your gap step. Just get a pinch on that guy, you know what I mean? Everybody was kind of looking at that group, and of all things, the hogs came out. I love them hogs. I love them hogs. I love them hogs. For that time, it was a big group of men, but it also was a fun group of guys, and I think the whole hog nickname was perfect. Well, they were genuinely a talented group of players, but no offensive line gets famous without a good nickname. It's an offensive line. Redskins, bro! Washington had the fun bunch too, and everybody thought of the receivers, but the, here are these big, burly guys, and they were getting recognized. Third butcher is the word hogs. The thing they forgot is before a hog goes to the butcher, somebody got to kill it. And then, next thing you know, that expanded, and then you got the hogettes. Run them out, run them out, hogs! Well, oh my gosh, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody likes a guy dressed up as a woman who's also a pig, let's be honest. Bureaucrats beware, this was pork belly politics at its best. The hogs had taken over the nation's capital. The fast, skinny guys would identify with the fun punch, and the old, fat guys would identify with the hogs. John Riggins was kind of an honorary hog because he partook with those guys, and, and I think that was the thing, too. It was an exclusive club. We didn't just get into the hogs unless A, you were part of that offensive line or you were someone they deemed worthy of being a hog. You think about the hog, the fans with the hog snout or whatever it is. That's why they're on the list. Everybody remembers the hogs. They were big. They weren't that big. They weren't fat. Still to come, the man with one of the great nicknames of all time. The Grave Digger. Love that. I don't know if a, the grave digger is a fitting. He doesn't seem like a guy who's done a ton of manual labor. Who else is on that fat guy list? He didn't crack the top ten, but a certain discount double checker got some votes. BJ Rogers should be on the list because when the man gets in the end zone and he does his little touchdown dance, his whole belly jiggles, and that's the beauty of being the fat guy. That's the quintessential moment for any fat guy. But B.J. Raji, man, you know, if he wasn't doing those dances and the discount double check commercials, but he's a scary dude, too. Anytime a big guy gets the ball, even though he shouldn't have it, it's like a lineman or a defensive lineman, I get, like, giddy. It doesn't matter what jersey he's wearing. Just like... <laughs> If a lineman scores a touchdown on accident, it is like the most entertaining thing to see him do his touchdown dance. And he's all jiggly, jiggly, jiggly. But a lot of the best players are blobs. Like B.J. Raji, the next big man on our list also jiggled on the Packers' defensive line. The number two big guy of all time, Gilbert Brown. I love that you had Gilbert Brown on this list. Gilbert Brown was enormous and very good at using that to his advantage. Gilbert Brown, he was just monstrously big. It's okay to be 340, 345, 350. When you start tipping him at 370, you got a problem. They may list him in the, in the mid-300s, but that guy's pushing four bills. I mean, this guy was 345 pounds, and when you have a nickname like the Grave Digger, you're God. They got the Halloween up when the Grave Digger come out. For Gilbert Brown, the Grave Digger, come on. It, has there ever been a better celebration of sacking a quarterback? The old Grave Digger. I mean, the grave digger, you know, he had the shovel. You know, I mean, he was just looking to put bodies in the grave. They called Gilbert Brown the grave digger. Can you imagine the poor bastard that has to dig his grave one day? His fat just seemed fatter than anyone else's. Gilbert Brown, physique, kind of like an overstuffed burrito. You know when you go to a burrito place and they can't even quite roll the burrito, there's so much stuff in it? That's Gilbert Brown. Everyone agrees Gilbert Brown was big. But how big? He was like a tall building. He was huge. You could build a skyscraper out of Gilbert Brown. Yeah, Gilbert Brown was as wide as he was tall. He really was. I always wondered how they, they got a jersey on that guy, because his gut was so huge. But he, he was a great player. There were times when you put Gilbert Brown on top of that center and you weren't running the football. 
you could not move him. You weren't running up that middle. Like, that's what you want. He was quick as like. Under some pressure. Hit and step by Gilbert Brown. My quickest time in the 40 was a 4'6". So a guy at 320 pounds running 4'6", that's fast. A 4'6", 40, we'll believe that. 320 pounds, uh, not so much. He was the anchor for that uh, Super Bowl run and Super Bowl winning team in Green Bay. Gilbert Brown. The only way we get respect is by kicking tail out there on the field. That's what Gilbert did, man. Gilbert stuffed, stuffed everything coming up that middle. He was the perfect nose. Gilbert Brown is actually a coach in the lingerie league now. That's my dude, buddy, all right? Come on, man. So he must look like he's the bouncer that kind of goes around and protects the strippers at a bachelorette party. Who worries about Pop Warner, high school, Division One? NFL, getting on a staff with a pro team, when you can coach smoke shows in the lingerie league. The words Gilbert Brown and lingerie shouldn't even ever, ever be in the same sentence. I've got that mental image now, and I'm not going to lose it for hours. Thank you. I don't hear no fat lady singing. I told you they know it's a fat lady singing. And I'll see with the Franklin no win. Up next, find out who is the biggest guy in our countdown. He has girth. I don't know what girth is, but girth. You know what girth, girth, girth. Whatever it is, I don't know what it is, but he has it. Whatever it is, he has it. He has a lot of it. Girth. The fat lady has not found yet. Cat run like a fat butt. See his belly coming out? Hey, a little chunky little boy. Fat boy's up there. Before we reveal our number one heavyweight, let's re-examine our high-calorie countdown one more time. Number 10, Big D, Big Lineman. <laughs> I'm looking sexy, as you can see. Number 9, Pittsburgh's favorite oversized running back. The give us to the buck, and the buck drops into the end zone. I ain't fast, I'm kind of quick. <laughs> number 8. The only thing a black hole can swallow. This guy not only looks like an offensive lineman, his nickname's the Sea Bass. He's one of the great kickers of his generation. Number seven, the Big Apple's jumbo size jet. Damn, I'm losing so much weight, I gotta pick my drawers up. Let's go to eat a damn snack. Number six, the fat wallet of Albert Ainsworth. He got paid and it's like he ate all the money they gave him. Number five, the silver and black big quarterback. What other top ten list could Jamarcus Russell possibly be on? Number four, Vince Will Fork and Spoon. I think Vince is probably one of the fastest guys in the NFL right now. Number three, Washington goes hog wide. Redskins, program, Redskins. Point, point. Root them out, root them out. Oh. Number two, Gilbert Brown packs on the pounds. Gilbert Brown, he was just monstrously big. Hit and step by Gilbert Brown. The number one big guy of all time, The Fridge. He absolutely has to be number one. I would say he fits the bill. Fridge absolutely deserves to be number one. All fat guys should bow to The Fridge. The GOAT of the big guys. No question. He's the GOAT. He's the all-time big guy. He was really round. Fridge? How about double fridge? Just stack two fridges together. That's what William Perry was like. William Perry hasn't played in 20 years, but there's a reason he sits atop our list. His post-retirement circuit of eating contest and celebrity appearances has only increased his net girth. How he hasn't done like every season of Celebrity Fit Club is be is beyond me. I mean, you get this guy from fridge, try and get him to a single panel fridge, yeah, and like a wine to, cooler, yeah, you know, into like a wine rack. I can't imagine where his mom went shopping for clothing. That must have just been all overalls and t-shirts at that point, or painting tarps. I remember getting the poster when he was at Clemson, actual size. You could turn it any way you want, it was the same length. I mean, it was like this way, this way, boom, it was like a square, this huge orange square. At the combine, William Perry was 358 pounds. 
and he took his shirt off to do the vertical leap. Look at William Perry doing the high five! <laughs> Drafted by the Bears in the first round in 1985, Perry made his entrance into the NFL at 335 pounds. Literally, like when you say like a larger than life player, that was William Perry. He was a freak of an athlete because he could probably dunk a basketball 300 pounds back in the day. If you could have just molded him, you know, like a piece of clay, and just kind of on the wheel, spin it down and kind of shred. Yeah, let me take a little bit here, a little bit there. I think there's probably a world-class sprinter underneath there. William Perry goes 60 yards with the bubble. Disappointing. Got behind. Buddy Ryan really wasn't playing him much. Mike Ditka decides, put him on offense. Let's have him block. Let's have him actually carry the ball. William Perry of 315 pounds lining up in the uh, fullback formation. He broke the mold, right? I mean, we see it all the time now where offensive linemen, defensive linemen, Get into the backfield. I think Perry was the trendsetter when it came to that. Perry in motion to the near side. McMahon fakes the hand. Open! Fires the right side. Oh, Perry scored three offensive touchdowns in his career. One in particular still stands out. Yes, William Perry has scored on a one-yard touchdown run in the Super Bowl. Still kind of a bitter thing in the in the minds of a lot of Bears fans because Walter Payton didn't get a Super Bowl touchdown. It, that right there is a victory for fat guys everywhere. Well, it's the Midwest, and people eat a lot. And seeing him do that, everybody starts to identify with it. Hey, maybe I could do that. You gotta keep a lot of coke in the refrigerator. The media just fell in love with him, and he was in the paper every day, and he could do no wrong. The refrigerator. <laughs> he was just one of those rare occurrences of entertainment and sports just merging perfectly. It's like a hit song landed in Chicago his rookie year. It was always on the radio. You never were not hearing about the fridge in Chicago. He was an obsession for all of us. Obsessed as we are with big guys, some people were more obsessed with our list and those that didn't make it. John Madden, where is he at? Get your big butt out of here! The one guy that I remember was the Nigeria Nightmare Christian. Boy, he is too big and too fast to be playing running back in the NFL. It started out with Bubba Paris. Bubba never ordered lunch. He would walk around and get a bite from everybody in the facility. Hey, wow, what's that? Can I have a bite of that? I'm sure he had four or five lunches. I don't know how you can have this list and not have Artie Donovan on this list. And this is a guy who used to have Schlitz and bologna for breakfast.